project began because my wife, Penelope, is an artist who was working on trying to paint in the dark, and she was researching artists who had painted darkness, and Blake Ock's name came up, and I looked at the story, and I immediately thought, this is a, this is a story that has to come yeah, in, uh, onto the screen in some, in some way. Larry and I do go way back to 1980, and uh, you know when, when Larry said, "Look, there's this artist, Blakelock." You know, like I think most people, 99% of people, I went like, "Who is Ralph Albert Blakelock?" It's a story that has all the uh, features that Rick actually has worked on in other documentaries that he's made over the years: The West, New York City artists struggling to mm. achieve great works in the face of personal challenges. I think the combination of Blake Locke's painting and this baroquely complex and bitterly tragic story, it's amazing that people don't know about Blake Locke, that he is this sort of, you know, the, the most, you know, unknown great American artist, hands down. Um, and it, it feels in a certain way that that's part of the story, that there's something dispossessed, both about things that he paints, about Blake Lock himself, and in a way about his legacy. It's a specialty. People kind of come to Blake Lock and it then dawns on you, kind of can't get them off your mind. There's something that really stays there. There are a lot of Blake Lock uh, aficionados who, are, who, who just got hooked at a certain point. It's not the life story that hooks Really, if it, it, the life story is garish and uh, right. grotesque and broke, as you say, it's, you know, it's one of the saddest story ever told, perhaps. If it wasn't for the art, the story would just be something that you could read and forget about. But the art draws you in, and once you're hooked, you will go anywhere to see another one. We really want to bring Blake Locke's art back to the eye of the public in a way that will be also fold his story in, but be true to the vision that the art itself is trying to project. In the earliest phases of the project, when we were doing um, the course that Larry taught at the University of Chicago, you know, the striking thing was how much the students themselves were really wanted to say, listen, this is not, don't look at his art as sort of like an example of mental illness. It's not that. It is in its power, in its innovation, in the impact that it has. It is really something which is redemptive and an escape from what was most difficult for Blake Locke. And I think there's going to be a real tension in telling this story when you're fortunate enough to be able to work with people who, you know, you're not the same as them, they're not the same as you, but where you feel such a sort of a commonality of purpose and a complementarity of kind of abilities and um, points of view and perception. There's a kind of an exhilarating serenity that goes along with having collaborators um, or being a collaborator in a partnership um, that extends beyond Larry and me into editors and cinematographers, for example. What a blessing to be part of this project because Blake Lock is so interesting, but what a blessing to be part of it with someone whom I've known, you know, going back to 1980 and our time at, you know, um, in the Wild West of the Columbia graduate program in English and comparative literature. It's really nice to be able to work with somebody you're so comfortable with. Um, because we know each other really well for, for many years. And thank the Gray Center for uh, you know, helping us have the time to, to think about this together with the students in the class, uh, who are many of whom are still like, hooked yeah. on, the, on the project. Absolutely, right. We couldn't have gotten as far as we did without, without them. And of course, without the support, we wouldn't have gotten anywhere. So yeah, we really appreciate that. And it's been such a great way to begin a film, so to have the liberty and luxury of being invited to think differently and to think open-endedly, to not, you know, not be sort of so kind of end-focused as you begin a project is really, you know, that's been what the Gray Center for I And we really well. needed to do that with this, with this uh, subject because it was just, there's, there were just too many angles.